and welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm Rachel Takeman and I'm trying to better myself in 2020 by tackling a new goal every month and tracking it all through YouTube videos. I'm sure lots of people can relate to this, but COVID has made me a little bit restless. I love traveling, though I've never really done a ton of traveling in the past, but something about actually not being able to travel because of COVID makes me miss traveling even more. I love exploring new places and I'm all about traveling on the cheap. So today I wanna share with you my newest solution for traveling during COVID and traveling on a budget. If you haven't already, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. So let me take you back in time. My junior year of high school, I discovered Volkswagen vans and I fell in love, mostly because of the cool vibes. I kind of pushed aside that dream for a while because it seemed out of reach to find a Volkswagen van that isn't too expensive but runs well and because I don't know how to drive a stick shift. But recently on TikTok, I found a more achievable dream. It started with an account of a couple that lives in a converted cargo van. I watched all of their TikToks in one afternoon and learned so much about how they built their van to sustain them on the go so that they don't even need a campsite with hookups. I dove deep into research about boondocking and camping without campsites. I realized that a converted cargo van would be much more practical than a Volkswagen van because it's easier to find cargo vans. We could find one that's automatic transportation transmission and that's newer and wouldn't need as much work. But still, I pushed aside this dream and said, it's not the time. But then I discovered a TikTok account of a couple who transformed their old minivan into a camper of sorts. Now, this isn't nearly as fancy as a cargo van conversion, but it felt much more doable. This couple pretty much just took out the back seats and threw a full-size mattress in the back of the minivan. So I started researching getting a cheap minivan. But then the TikTok and YouTube algorithms really figured out what videos I'd like and I started stumbling across video after video of couples and individuals who turned their SUV into a camper and I already have an SUV so I started thinking about it and then I couldn't stop thinking about it and then I measured everything out and determined it would work and talked to Justin about it and got all the supplies I needed and built it all out and I did it I know a little crazy so let me walk you through the car this is my 2009 Honda CRV that I purchased from CarMax almost two years ago and now this is our our car camper. This is what it looks like when it's not set up. For the last few weeks I have kept it set up like this which allows me to still have storage space and keep the two front seats up. So as you can see, I built a platform to make the sleeping space level. This is the tricky part because every car is different. I watched a bunch of videos of people who converted their SUV, but there was no one video that I could completely base it off of. But I watched a whole bunch of videos to get the gist of what the platform was trying to accomplish and then measured my car and made a plan that would work for the space that I have. In the trunk, you'll see that I have lots of storage space. We fit a lot of gear in the trunk. On this side, we have both of our camping chairs, which fit perfectly on the side here. We also have shower shoes and water shoes here. On the left side we have storage bins. The first one holds our camping essentials including a flashlight, headlamp, hand sanitizer, wipes, multi-tool, duct tape, and other random things you need for camping. The second storage bin holds our bedtime essentials including the fitted sheet for our mattress, a couple small blankets, and the coverings for our windows and windshields. On the other side we have our portable camping stove and then this storage bin which holds our our kitchen essentials, including a compact pot and pan set, some simple dishes and plastic utensils, propane for the stove, and this little spice set. We also stuff our sleeping bag on this side when we're not camping. On the right side of the platform, we fit a picnic blanket, and then we have some extra room to use while we're camping. So here's what the car looks like when we're ready to go camping. As you can see, I fold the mattress down more and put the fitted sheet and sleeping bag on the bed. It's too much of a hassle for me to put together and take apart the bedding every night when we're camping, so I choose to have it mostly set up like this. We also keep a small folding table and a pop-up changing tent either on the platform or behind the front seats. Besides all the camping gear, we each bring a small carry-on size suitcase for our clothes and toiletries, and we have a large cooler which we fit behind the front seats. The trunk mostly looks the same, but when we're ready to go, I keep this 
extra bag in the trunk. We each have a shower bag in our suitcases with our shower supplies and other toiletries that we don't need quite as often. But this bag in the back has our more frequently used toiletries like our toothbrushes and toothpaste, micellar water to wash our faces, eye cream, etc. This way we don't have to take out the suitcases as often. We also have this small cooler in the back of the car, again for the things we need to access more often. Our big cooler and suitcases are not quite as easily accessible once the bed is fully set up. So let me show you what it looks like when we're ready to sleep. When it's time to go to sleep, we push up the front seats and fold them down a bit. Then we flip down the front part of the platform and place the two legs underneath. Once the front part of the platform is down, we flip out the rest of the mattress, put the pillows in place, and it's ready to sleep on. I got this mattress on Amazon. It's a four inch memory foam mattress that's super comfortable and really practical because of the way that it folds up. The other thing we do when sleeping is put all the window and windshield coverings on. I bought and returned a lot of options from Amazon because I wasn't really sure what we needed. At first I thought we'd need blackout type shades, but after testing out the camping experience in my parents' driveway without all the shades, I found that we don't need it to be that dark. So I landed on these different shades. This is the front windshield shade, and this does keep out most of the light. For the back windshield shade, I went with this one, but I might just make something in the future that will fit this window a little better, because I'm not 100% happy with this one. My mom and I made the shades for the front doors and for these little trunk windows, because I couldn't find anything online that fit perfectly and wasn't really expensive. We used an old tablecloth to make these. The front door shades stick into the windows as they close and then attach at the bottom with velcro strips, but the trunk windows just attach with velcro strips. All of these window coverings were not necessarily for keeping the light out of my car, but mainly for privacy when we're camping in public. The back door window coverings are these mesh covers I got from Amazon. They cover the whole door window frame and attach with velcro strips so that you can keep your windows open and get a fresh breeze in the car. And then finally, though my sunroof does have a cover for darkness and privacy, I purchased this magnetic mesh covering for the sunroof for ventilation, but also so that we can see outside when we're laying down. So when it's time to go to sleep, we just flip out the platform in the bed, put all the window coverings on, and shut ourselves in. So now that you've seen what it looks like when we're sleeping, when we're driving, and when we're not camping, let me show you how I built it. There are three sections to this platform. Sheet one, which is the part that folds down when we're ready to sleep to give us more headspace. Sheet two, which is the part that lays on top of the folded down seats. And sheet three, which is the part that stands in the trunk space. I measured the distance between the back of the trunk and the back of the folded down seats, which was 40 inches, and the distance between the two ridges in the trunk, which was 30 inches. So sheet three was 30 by 40. Sheet two needed to be a little wider because there's no ridge in the back, and it needed to be a little shorter so it would just fit over the seats and not get in the way of our front seats while driving. So sheet two was 52 by 28 inches. And finally, sheet one needed to reach from the top of sheet two to the back of the front seats, which was 17 inches. At first, I cut sheet one to be the same width as sheet two, but I later found that this was too wide to flip it down on the hinge because of the slope of the roof of my car. So I cut the corners out and sheet one ended up being 52 by seven for the bottom part and 42 by 10 for the top. Sheets one and two are connected with a 48 inch piano hinge to easily flip out. Sheet three is completely separate. Another revision that I made later in the build was to curve the end of sheet two. I wanted all three sheets to be able to fit in the trunk of my car so that I could have the front seats up if I wanted. So I needed to curve sheet two so that it would fit in the trunk. Now for the legs of the sheets. Sheet three was the easiest to figure out and the easiest to build. I knew I wanted the spines to go front to back because I wanted the storage space underneath and I knew I wanted it level with this ridge in my trunk. So I simply measured the distance between the top of the ridge and the floor of the trunk, which was 14 inches. I used three quarter inch plywood for the whole platform. So I just subtracted three quarter inch from that height and came up with 13 and a quarter inches for the legs of sheet three. So I ended up using three pieces of plywood, 13 and a quarter inch by 28 inches, which I attached four and a half inches from the sides, leaving me with 14 and a quarter inch wide spaces under the platform. Sheet two was definitely the most difficult because of the slope of the back seats, but I ended up using six spines going side to side instead of front to back. 
I don't think six was actually necessary. I think I could have just gone with two longer ones, but I was worried that the legs wouldn't sit flat on all three back seats folded down, so I did it in separate pieces. But basically, I had three pieces in the front that were two and a quarter inches, and three in the back that were five and three quarters inches to make sheet two level with sheet three. I made these six legs 14 inches wide, but again, if I did it over, I would have just made two longer legs about 38 inches wide, and the same height as I did, two and a quarter inches and five and three quarters inches. For sheet one, I used two pieces of plywood, 10 inches by 22 and a quarter. The length was the distance between the top of sheet two and the floor behind the front seats to make sheet one level with sheets two and three. At first, I put hinges on these two legs, but I found that it was difficult to fold them down and took up a lot more space. It also wasn't as easy to move the whole platform when they were on hinges. So I changed it up and made these little sockets for the legs to sit underneath the platform, and this worked so much better. Once I had all the pieces built, I put peel and stick carpet tiles on top of the platform just so that the wood wouldn't snag or rip the mattress or anything else we put on it. And that's it! So the last thing I want to go over is the budget breakdown. I'm a big fan of budgets, so when I started dreaming about this build, I planned out all the materials I'd need and put it all in a Google Sheets spreadsheet to keep track of. This budget does not include all the tools I needed. The tools I used were a drill, a tape measure, a level, a sander, a square edge, chalk line, circular saw, utility knife, wood glue, and clamps. And we also bought some other things that were not actually necessary, but these are the necessary expenses for an SUV conversion like this one plywood, a piano hinge, one and a half inch wood screws, peel and stick carpet tiles, a folding mattress, and window shades because you definitely need some ventilation. Other than the back window shades though, you can use snow covers or just DIY some curtains for the car. So the total necessary expenses are under $300, which basically breaks even with a three night hotel stay. This is definitely a budget friendly way to travel. There are lots of extra expenses that we chose to go for, including getting the perfect fitting camping chair, the tote underneath the platform and the pop-up changing room which I've linked all of these things in the description below but these are all optional so that's pretty much it now believe me I'm still a dreamer and I'm still dreaming of getting a Volkswagen van or a cargo van or even an old school bus to transform into a converted camper but this SUV conversion will definitely hold me over for a while thanks so much for watching this video this is something I'm really into right now and I would love to share more about once we've gone camping in the SUV a couple times I would love to share the apps and websites I've been using to plan out trips and some of our tips and tricks when we have more experience. So let me know if you're interested in this type of video. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up button down below and subscribe down below. It really helps my channel grow. Tune in next week to learn what my October goal will be. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I'll see you next week.